Hi everyone, Kevin C. here from Santa Rosa Junior College with some winemaking basics. Today we're going to talk about harvest decisions. So let's look at the very basic winemaking process to start. Whether you're making white wines or you're making red wines, there are four steps in the very basic process. At each step, a winemaker has a series of choices. The first step is deciding when to harvest, and that's what we're going to look at today. In step two, we will crush the grapes so we can free up the juice from the grapes so the fermentation process can take place. And whether you're making whites or reds, the first step after harvest, step two overall, is to crush the grapes. Now, if you're making white wines, the next step in the process is to press the juice away from the skins. We do not ferment white wine, white wines in contact with the skins in general. And then the fourth step is going to ferment that juice and turn it into wine. If you're making red wines after you crush, the third step is actually to do the fermentation because we ferment the juice in contact with the skins when we're making red wines. The reason we do that is the color, much of the flavor, the tannin in the red wine comes from the skins. So we ferment the juice in contact with the skins to extract that color and flavor and tannin. And then finally, we would press the finished wine away from the skins once the fermentation is complete or close to complete or sometimes a little after fermentation is complete and we'll talk about that later. So in each of these four steps, winemakers have a series of choices. And today, we're going to talk about the choices that are involved at harvest. So there are four grape characteristics important to harvest. Sugar, acid, ripe flavors, and green flavors. Sugar, you want that not too high, but not too low at harvest. Sugar is going to turn into alcohol in the wine. The grape, the yeast that do the fermentation will take that sugar and turn it into alcohol. So you want the sugar high enough that you have plenty of alcohol and a nice balanced wine, but not so high that the alcohol is excessive and the wine again is unbalanced. Acid, you want that not too high, not too low. If it's too high, your wine will taste like you're drinking lemon juice. If it's too low, your wine will taste like flat Coke. So acid has to be in a sweet spot as like sugar. Ripe flavors are going to increase during ripening of the grapes and you want the ripe flavors relatively high. You want them such that they're going to give you a finished wine that you're desiring to make. Green flavors likewise in general we want those low but again we want to pick the we want to pick a harvest point so the green flavors are where we want them in the finished wine. So if you look here on this little chart, in the, on the horizontal axis, I have time. So if you think about what happens as grapes ripen, you're going to have, over time, as grapes are ripening, you're going to have sugar increasing. So this would be sugar, and see how well I can write here on this little tablet I'm using. That would be sugar increasing over time. Well, while sugar is increasing, you're also going to have ripe flavors increasing. And this makes sense, it's like ripening any fruit. As it gets ripe, you have an increased level of ripe flavors. In a perfect growing season, sugar and ripe flavors are gonna increase at about the same rate. I've sh I'm showing the two lines here increasing at about the same rate. That's ideal. Sometimes sugar will outpace ripe flavors you'll end up with a higher alcohol wine in that case because you'll probably pick later. You'll wait for the ripe flavors to get to be where you want them. And if the sugar is outpacing the ripe flavors, the sugar level may be very high at harvest. While sugar and ripe flavors are increasing, acid is decreasing. So this is our acid. And as the grapes ripen, acid comes down. And if you think about it, that makes sense. At the beginning, when the, when the grapes are very unripe, the, the grapevine is saying to birds that are passing, hey, don't eat these grapes yet. They're too tart. They're not desirable. The grapevine wants those, the birds to eat those grapes when the seeds are nice and ripe and ready to be dispersed and create a new grapevine. 
So acid comes down, eventually gets low enough, the grapevine is saying to the passing birds, hey, it's time to eat these grapes. They're delicious and the acid's not too high. At the same time the acid is, is declining, the uh, green flavors are also declining. And so you want those again to come to a level that's perfect. So the winemaker is going to make a decision somewhere during harvest and they're going to, they might have a harvest window of time in which the sugar is not too high the acid, and not too low. The acid's not too high and not too low. Ripe flavors are where you want them. Green flavors are where you want them. And that is where you're going to want to harvest. So this range here, there's some period of time in here that's the sweet spot in which the winemaker is going to say, it is time to harvest the grapes. Now let's talk a little bit more specifically about acid. There are two main acids in wine, tartaric and malic. There are some minor acids as well, but these are the two major acids. And they differ a little bit in how they change during ripening. Tartaric, it turns out, during the ripening season, if, if again, we have time on the horizontal axis, and if this, this axis represents our, our ripening um, season for the grapes, our tartaric acid does not change a lot toward the end of the ripening season. Malic acid, however, does change. It'll peak right around the time of verasion, which is when the grapes start turning color and softening. And then it will continue to decline to harvest. If you're in a very warm weather growing season, your malic acid tends to decline faster than in a cool growing uh, growing location. I said growing season. I should have said growing location. So in warm weather, like in the Central Valley of California, malic acid is going to decline faster because it stays warm at night and the grapes are very physiologically active at night. If you're in Sonoma County and it cools off at night, you'll have it'll be the opposite. Mal uh, the grapevine will shut down at night because it cools off so much and malic acid will stay higher. So as grapes get close to harvest, again, acid overall is declining, and it's primarily malic acid that is coming down. Now let's take an example. Let's go back and look at harvest season, and we know that sugar is increasing, and we know that green flavors are decreasing. Let's take an example. Let's think about 2011 in California. In 2011, it rained in September. Some people picked before the rain. Some people picked after the rain. So let's say the rain happened right about here in the growing season. All right, so this was the rain. And if, for example, someone picked prior to the rain, they might have had uh, a sugar level. Well, let's say, for example, the sugar, if you pick here, the sugar level might have been 22 degrees bricks. Well, we usually consider that sugar is converted to alcohol at a rate of about, about 60%. So 22 degrees bricks times 0.6 would give you an alcohol level of about 13.2 percent. Well, what else is characterized by this picking point? Well, green flavors are here. So it might be that the green flavors still represented fairly high levels of bell pepper flavor. In other words, you could still taste the bell pepper in, for example, Cabernet Sauvignon. What if instead you picked after the rain, you, you let the rain pass, hopefully your grapes didn't get moldy, and you decided to pick somewhere after the rain, and let's say, you're, you, let's say you were at 25 degrees bricks. Well, applying that same conversion factor of 0.6, let's multiply 25 by 0 0.6, and we get an alcohol level of 15%. So, 
If you pick before the rain, you probably had fairly low alcohols. After the rain, you had higher alcohols. And at this picking point, your green flavors are going to be lower. So very likely, you had no bell pepper flavor. So this is just an example of how a winemaker might make decisions at harvest. Rain in 2011 complicated the picture. If you picked before, you had lower alcohol levels and some green flavor, but you didn't risk your grapes molding because of the rain. If you picked after, hopefully your grapes didn't mold, your bricks was higher, you had a higher alcohol percent and possibly no bell pepper flavor. So that's typical of how harvest decisions are made. Okay, that's part one of Wine Making Basics Harvest Choices. Thanks for watching. This, uh, if I can give a little plug for Santa Rosa Junior College Introduction to Enology class, if you'd like to learn more and, and go in more detail, it's the Wine 3 class, and we have a hybrid class which includes online lectures and labs on four Saturdays. So if you live in the area and you can make it to Santa Rosa for four Saturday lab classes, please check our class at uh, the link shown there. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. In part two, we'll talk about other decisions. We'll talk about the crush decisions. Thanks, for, thanks again for watching.